So the last thing you want to become is a church that pursues an exhaustive list of rules and regulations. But sometimes it's important to remind ourselves of a few things. <laughs> Around here, we're more interested in giving a cup of water to a thirsty person than we are in drinking it ourselves. Around here, we're more interested in rubbing shoulders with people who make plain mistakes than we are in saving lots of people to protect their habit. Around here, we're more interested in following the individual safety than we are in following the expected of the team for the Around here, we are more interested in looking at the living of the real world, the world that God created in us, than we are in creating this world. And just to be clear, we'll gladly search for the lost, but we're not going to be every time. Around here, we're more interested in growing big people than we are in growing big church. Around here, we're more interested in helping you discover the life of worship than we are in furthering the musical genre. And finally, around here, we're more interested in walking through life together than we are in watching each other in the city. And we're very interested in showing you how this works. Friends, we are a community that is guided by these biblical values. They will guide every decision we make, every relationship we nurture, and every point we can see. This is the road we're choosing to travel, and you are invited to take the journey with us, because we love it if you join us. Senor, everyone, is not the reason why we are here. Amen. It is not the reason why we are here. God is the reason. Amen. The God of Jacob, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God that grew up with the disciples. That's the reason why we are here. The God who died at the 
walk through us. That's the reason that we are here. As a matter of fact, open your Bibles of Acts 17. Come on. Acts 17, 29 says, Being in God's offspring. Say it with me. Being in God's offspring. Say it with me. Being in God's offspring. We all know the thing that the divine being, that God, that God is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of human beings. The time of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Brothers and sisters, let us be grateful that God allowed us to worship Him this way. Because sing for Him. Come on, let us rise. Come on, let us rise. And just sing for our God. And as the Lord, as we sing our prayers, that God in heaven, God in heaven, will listen to us. Amen.
why we always come here, why we always want to be part of the corporate worship. Heavenly Father, I pray that you give us a pure heart, a heart, Lord God, that is broken, a heart, Lord Father, God, that is longing for you, a heart, Lord Father, God, who is thirsty for more of you. Lord God, fill us with more of you, O Heavenly Father. Let, Lord God, our world be you and nothing else. Lord God, take us and hold us. This is what we pray. Help us, O oh God, to really understand your words, your messages, O oh God. I pray, Lord God, that you would empower your pastor for today. And every word that he would be speaking is power. Every word, Lord God, that he would be speaking, O oh God, would really hit us. We really convict us. We are really bringing change inside of us. Heavenly Father, help us not to be Christians only on Sundays, but Christians, O oh Father, every day, sharing your words, having a heart for the lost. But Lord God, I pray that you would speak to us right now in the most personal way. Illumine us, O Lord God. Give us the understanding that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How are you this evening? Are you are you are you glad that you are here? Right. Uh, I want you to give your best smile to the person beside you. Okay, even if you don't know the person, even if the person thinks, oh, are you crazy? Just just give the person a smile, okay? Don't stop smiling until that person you know respond responds to smiling. Okay. Okay, some of you are not yet smiling. Come on. Turn the person next to you and smile. Right? So that's that's how that's how the the children of God smile, okay? Some of you your smile is Hangang Paina. Alright, before we go to God's word. Allow me to welcome each and every one to welcome to our worship service tonight. Are you blessed that you are here? Right, welcome. So this is the second week of the new year 2015, right? And can you please, uh, this time, not just smile, but welcome the person beside you. Like, good evening. I'm glad that you're here, right? Come on. You don't know that person could be God's will for you. Right? And you know, it's true. In, in this church, a lot of our young people were married to those you know, young people, their favorite seatmate every Sunday. Right? So I'm just giving you a tip. Next time, you know, Sit down in a place where your crush is sitting. Right? Okay. Of course, uh, so welcome. I'd like to welcome Lito Diamante and his daughter here. Lito, can you please just there? So welcome back to Brad Ford. Lito is a good friend of mine. He is now based in Bohol, planting a church. Right, we have other uh but here. Oh, we have visitors here. Okay, can we ask them to just wait? Okay, we have three visitors here in front. Come on, let's give them our best round of applause. That's the only one we can afford. All right, so praise God for that. Those visitors, okay, only three of you, first timers. Okay, we have another one, okay? So welcome. Now only for this Sunday, I'm going to give daily bread to our visitors, right? 
So three plus one, and then suddenly everyone becomes a visitor. <laughs> All right, we have some important announcements before we go to God's Word. All right, next week, take note of our schedules next week. So let's let's first go to the slides of the news. Slides and news, right? Now next week, this is our schedule. We are not going to have an evening service next Sunday, right? So please make sure, tell the person next to you, no service on Sunday next week. Okay, instead, we're going to have it on a Saturday, okay, anticipated service. So instead of coming here on January 18, let's come here on January 17, right? Now, of course, almost every day next week is going to be a, a traffic jam situation in Cebu, right? But let me just challenge you if you're a true child of god you are willing to experience some discomfort for just one day right imagine the cross that jesus christ carried you know in the via dolorosa the, the way of calvary right so if if it means for you to walk for you know two kilometers three kilometers okay i hope you don't mind why because it's so important that we should be gathered and worship the Lord, all right? So let's not be, uh, you know, a kind of uh, convenient Christian. You know, there's nothing, so I want to go to church, okay? So I hope we will all be gathered here when? January 17, right? Here, same place, 6 in the evening. All right, and then on Sunday, we still have the 7.30 service, so if you can if you can make it on a Saturday, you can still join on a Sunday morning. We still have the 7.30 English service and then the 10 a.m. Cebuana service. Okay, there's another additional service next week. For those of us living in Palamban, uh, where else, Mabolo, okay? In other words, on that side of Jones Avenue, you cannot cross. Okay, we will worship at J Mall 9.30 in the morning. Those in Lapu-Lapu, where else? Consolacion, Diluan. If you are still from Bugo, okay? If you are from Dan Bantayan, okay? We will gather at J Mall in Cinema 1. So next week we have four services so to make sure that we have the opportunity to worship the Lord. I don't want us to be an easy Christian, but you know, it's it's Sinulo, so I'm not going to worship, right? Sinulo is the best time to worship the true God. Amen? As our uh, worship leader, uh, you know, how he started the, the praise and worship, you know, did, did you did you have the shock of a lifetime? Okay, and so they have introduction. Big Senor, is not the reason why we are gathered here tonight, right? So that's for next week. Also, okay, uh, do you have this in your in your bulletin? We are going to have a church-wide emphasis on the Old Testament on February one. It is called God's Grand Story, right? So for six weeks. We are going to have a series of sermons from the Old Testament, okay? It's a chronological sermon, so we'll begin with Genesis. I tell you, at the end of the six weeks, you will be so familiar with the story of God in the Old Testament. So not only on the sermon, you have here the schedule, but it will also be the same thing with uh, small groups. So we have a manual. Everyone will go together to the manual. We have a DVD so that we have the same lessons per week. And then along with the manual is a daily devotional. So this church-wide emphasis on the Word of God is in the pulpit and our sermons, in our small groups, in our Sunday schools, and in our daily devotional. The book, the manual is only 150 pesos, right? So probably uh, you can start Okay, maybe texting or calling the office to have your reservation because all our materials, you know, will have to come from Manila. Okay, we have to ship them here. 
So it's 150 pesos. You can have now the manual for your small group, right? With your daily devotional for six weeks. So six weeks, that's almost two, two months, right? Almost so. The whole months of February and uh, March, we are going through the Old Testament, all right? So you have there the schedule. Next week, probably, we can start uh, enlisting for the reservation of the manual, okay? So that's for uh, next month. And then tonight, can I see the hands of the regular members here, okay? You're a regular member here. Your name is found in the Book of Life <laughs> for Bradford. Okay, your name is found. Remember, the Bible says anyone's name not found in the Book of Life is thrown into the lake of fire, right? So if you're a regular member in this church, your name appears in our membership list, okay? We are going to have a meeting to approve our 2015 budget, all right? Our budget this year is 17.5 million. That's for all our programs and ministries this year. So please, uh, I know you're hungry already, but it is part of our Christian responsibility, all right? So please stay for a while so that we can approve the 2015 budget of the church and then after that we can all you know eat our dinner right okay tell the person next to you okay ba? okay good so let's go to the word of god okay once a year not not very often here in our church we talk about money right but once a year we talk about money because money is so important, okay? Who says that money is so important? Oh, some of you, okay. So you have no problem with money, huh? Okay. In fact, some, some people will say money makes the world go round. Right? I don't know with you, but one of the most important, most critical resources that God has given to man is money, right? And how we use money, how we earn that money, how we use it or how we abuse it, determines our heart, determines our faith. And so we're going to talk about tithing tonight, okay? Anybody knows tithing? Is that the thing, Pastor, that women wear? Okay? Men in tithes. Okay, not that, not that word, right? So let me begin with this questions that that uh, we, we ought to reflect this new year okay first do you love the lord above all before saying yes i want you to really pause do i really love god above all okay is it a yes okay next question do you want our church to grow right do you want us to grow do you want us to outgrow this, this room, right? Do you want more people to be sick? Okay. Because the, the only option, if people are not saved, the only option is hell. There are only two destinations of man. Either you go to heaven or you go to hell, right? Now, do we want people? Who are those people that we want to be saved? Right? Another question, do you want good health this year? Who wants good health this year? Come on, can I see some hands? Good health. Praise God. Oh, some of you are so healthy. You need to share that health to others. Okay? Oh, I'm not watching. I'm not focusing to particular people. Do you want your needs met this year? Yes? Okay. It can be financial needs. Maybe it's a need in your family, in your marriage. But do you want God to provide that particular need in your family? Do you want success and prosperity this year? Right? Now, these things that I'm talking, these things are available to people. These things are the things that God wants to do in your life and in my life. Okay? Tell the person next to you, God wants to bless you. Okay? God wants to bless you. We are worshiping a very abundant, gracious, you know, loving God. Amen? That's the God that we worship. 
But the question is this, why is it that a lot of Christians today are struggling with their finances? If God is so good, if God is so, you know, gracious, if God abundantly gives to us, then why is it that some people are struggling with their finances? You are not experiencing a breakthrough in your finances. If God promised to bless people, why is it that some Christians, not all, some Christians are not experiencing these blessings? Now, maybe our text tonight will help us, right? Will help us, will explain to us why some Christians, some believers, are not experiencing the abundant life that God promised, right? So, Let's turn our Bibles to Malachi chapter 3. Right? So, New Year's resolution, always bring your Bibles every Sunday worship. Right? Let's begin with verse 7. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Okay. Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? What's the answer of God? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be, there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your field will not drop their fruit before it is ripe. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Let's pray. Father, we are about to hear, listen to your word. I pray that you're going to bless your message tonight. Our hearts, Lord, help us to be sensitive, to be conscious of you. Allow your Holy Spirit to work in each of our hearts that we will truly understand your word. And so go out from this place, bless, equip, and ready to face the challenges this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to talk about tithing, right? Now even though every year we talk about tithing, yes, there are so many Christians today who don't know what is tithing. Okay, tithing is God's command in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, right? That we are supposed to return to him the first ten, right? Or, simply put, mathematically speaking, 10% of our income belongs to the Lord, right? That is the law of tithing, 10%. Look at Leviticus 27, verse 30. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil, fruit from the trees, it all belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. So what God is saying is this, everything is mine. I created you, I gave you life, I give all the, the provision, but then I have a kingdom to run. You know? I have a ministry to work. I have people to reach out. Enjoy the 90%, return back the 10%. Okay? Now here in our church, tithing is equal to giving. Okay, now I know there are some of us here, not from our church, who don't, you know, don't know about tithing because probably your your idea of giving is just giving God, you know, a tip, right? You know, in, in, in Sunday worship or maybe you attend the mass and then when the the offering bag is passed and it, it, it reaches your place, you know, you, you reach your pocket and sometimes you know, it takes a while because, you know, I want the color orange, color blue. Okay, not forgot, not forgot. Color violet, not forgot. 
color orange is forgotten. By the way, what bill is color orange? By <laughs> the Okay? What I'm saying is this. Even among Christians today, giving is a struggle. You struggle with life because you struggle with your giving to God. Now the Bible says, it all belongs to me. It is holy. Now what's, what's the meaning of the word holy? Holy means set apart. All right? So here's the idea. God has given us so many things. Good health, protection, <coughs> life. But then God is saying, the tithe belongs to me. That is holy. That is not yours. All right? But the problem is that people are still not giving God what belongs to Him. Now, the question is this, then why should we return our time to the Lord? Does the Lord need my money? Of course, the Lord is so rich, He holds the universe. Okay? Why do we have to give a time? Okay? Let me give you four reasons from our text. Why Christians, every Christian should give is tied to the Lord. Okay, the first lesson is this: tithing prioritizes God in my life. Okay, tithing prioritizes God in my life. Look at Proverbs chapter three, verse nine: Honor the Lord with your wealth. How many of us here are honoring God with the abundance of our wealth? Okay, the problem with people is this. You know, we call God, you know, we, we go to every church that we can find. We kneel down, we ask. But the problem is this, once our, our prayers are answered, once blessings are flowing, suddenly we forget the person who blessed us. Okay? That's what's happening here in Malachi chapter 3. Okay? God is no longer honored. Now, when the Bible says, honor the Lord with your wealth, take note, with the first fruits of all your crops. What, what are the first fruits? Meaning first harvest. Now, why did God require the first harvest? You know why? Now, we, we're not, we are not farmers here. But the reason why God requires the first fruits is because the first fruits are the best. You know that? The first harvest is usually the sweetest, the biggest, you know, the best. And that's what God is saying. That's how they live. That's the economy in the Old Testament, you know, for God's people. God blessed them with field. God blessed them with good weather. And God requires, okay, the first harvest belongs to the Lord. Right? Now, if your harvest is just, okay, 50 mangoes, that's easy. But what if God has blessed you with 50,000 mangoes? Are you willing still to give? See? So the problem now is that are we willing to honor God? You see, when we give to the Lord, when we give our tithes, the principle behind is not just, you know, for, so that, you know, there's something inside as well. This is not the reason, by the way, Okay, just to have uh, money in the church, no. The reason, the first reason why we, we tithe is this. Tithing is our expression that God is first in our lives. Where you put your resources, that becomes your God. Now, a lot of Christians today, they spend so many, so much money on, you know, dress, on gadgets, but when it comes to God, they are so stingy. Okay, how many of us? Okay, that, that, me, that reminds me of a story. There was this one father, a very rich dad. His daughter is about to be married, okay? And so, come the day of the wedding, the dad issued a 50,000 check as a gift to his son-in-law. All right? So, yan ang yang pag siyang daughter, hey, hey, dad, give this to your husband to be right so after the wedding you know the dad asked the, the daughter okay dad what happened to the check yeah yeah i gave it now dad all right i gave it now okay what's your reaction say no husband okay uh well, happy sure thank you did he cry 
Yes, yes, he, he cried. How long? Oh, maybe around 10 seconds. He said, what? What an ungrateful man. I cried making that check for an hour and he just cried for five seconds. You know? Sometimes, sometimes we act like that when we give to God. We struggle. Okay, have you experienced it in a worship service and there's only 500 pesos in your wallet or in your pocket? And it's offering time and you know, the, the bag is almost same outside and you're struggling. 500 a name. So, you're confused. Am I going to give this or not? You know, sometimes we struggle with giving God our best. You know why? Our giving shows how we treat God in our hearts. Because we don't treat God as He is. You see, when you read Malachi, by the way, can I give you an assignment? Can you please read Malachi this week? It's just four chapters, very short chapters. You can even read it tonight, all right? This is the, the context of Malachi. Malachi, during this time, this is the last book in the Old Testament, right? After Malachi, Matthew. Okay, what happened in the book of Malachi? After the exile, remember, they were exiled to Babylon. They were exiled to another place. They have now returned. God's people, the Israelites, the Jews, they have now returned. You know, God helped them. They have already put up their houses. They have already built the temple. Okay? In other words, the religious system is set, but their hearts are not. And in this book, God is complaining to the Jews. He says, okay, let's, let's, let's go to Malachi, okay? Can we turn to Malachi? Okay, are we there? Okay, Malachi chapter. Just go to chapter 2. Right. Okay, look at verse. Look at verse 10. Okay. Give me some few seconds to look. All right. It's not chapter, chapter one. Okay. Go to Malachi chapter one. Are you there? Okay, look at verse six. Malachi chapter one, verse six. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If I have a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due to me, says the Lord Almighty? It is you, O priest, who show contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? O say to the Lord, you place what? Defiled food on my altar. But you ask, how have we defiled you? By saying that the Lord's table is contemptible. When you bring blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice crippled or deceased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you? Says the Lord of my Now you see the point here? God is complaining. Because God says, you people, you call me your God. You call me your father. But look what kind of offering. You, you offer me bread, but it's what? It's spoiled bread. Nanay mga mulls. You offer me sacrifice, but look at the sacrifice you're offering. It's crippled, it's blind. God is saying, try to offer what you're offering to me to your governor, and we'll see if the governor will accept it. You see, what happened to these people? They were religious. They were following the rituals of religion. Are you following? But their hearts were very far from God. In other words, they were not giving God what is due him. God says, honor me with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Now, this is an example, okay, of the first fruit, okay? That's, that's the thing that God, you know, requires and expects from us, all right? If, I want you to picture like this is, 
your tithe to the Lord. But you know what people are bringing to God? This is what people are bringing to God. Leftovers. All right? Isn't that what we do? You know, we receive our salary Monday. You know, immediately, you know, we go to Ayala, you know, buy those things, pay our bills, buy a new gadget. Saturday, nagsuroy-suroy, Sunday comes, and what we have, they are leftovers to the Lord. Sincio. Reminds me of the story of that 1,000 bill. I, I think I have shared that to you, no? The 1,000 bill and the 20 peso bill, one day, nagkita sila. Oh, this is, you know, this is an unusual occasion. Okay, how are you, 1,000? I'm okay, how are you? Well, 20, you know. So, in one day, you'll see 20 peso bill and to 1,000 bill. You know, how, 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 how are you doing for all these years? You know, me, I, I'm always in the malls. You know, I'm always in the resorts, okay? Most of the time, I'm in casinos. Most of the time, I'm in restaurants. Most of the time, I'm in mga shops. Ikaw, 20, kumusta mo ka? Di ala, narapapal ko sa church. Okay? Aral ko ko permitili, wak kasuloy. You get the idea? In other words, why the 20, the 50 peso bill happen in the church? Because we give God leftovers. Okay? When we give our offering, okay, a lot of us are what? Are guilty of contempt to God. Ano man, imagine He's the God who blessed you, and you said you love God, but then in the past offering, you just give Him a tip. Or siya ka lang, waiter. Hmm. Friends, I, let me ask you, ang inong gitip ni God on a Sunday, do you think that's what God deserves with what He has given you in your life? Okay. What we give to God is an expression of who God is in our lives. Leftovers dishonor God. And that is what these people in Israel were doing. That's why God is saying, you are robbing me. You call me your father and you call me your master, and yet what you're offering to me are offerings for, you know, the slaves. You know, there are three people today when it comes to money. First group of people, they say, well, it's all mine. I work for it. I earn it. I deserve it. I can do what I want with it. And when there's left, well, that's what I give to the Lord. Okay? Kinsa may naani nga nga category. Raise your hand. Okay? This is the practical man. No, I'm the one who earned it. Why would I give it to God? Okay? Second group, okay? They say, well, 10%, the tithe, the 10% of my money belongs to God. The 19 is all mine. Kinsa mani, who, who, are, who belongs to this group? Wala here. Okay? Now, who among us here would not raise their hands no matter what I say? <laughs> I guess all of us. Okay? So this second group of people, these are the legalists. You know? Well, this is what God commands. But 10% is your fault. It's mine. Well, that is not the New Testament Christian. The real New Testament Christian is this. Our mindset is this. It all belongs to God. I only return to God what He commanded. He entrusts me the rest of His money. In other words, let's turn the table. We only get the leftover, the best goes to God. Amen? If you want your families to be blessed, if you want God to bless, you know, your business. If you want God to bless your your life this year, if you want God to bless your marriage, put God first. That's the key, my dear friends. That's the key to success. That's the key to prosperity. It's not thinking about self. It's thinking, how can I give my best to the Lord? Because that is what Jesus said in Matthew 6.33. My, Matthew 6.33 is Jesus' version of Malachi 3.10. Right? What is Matthew 6 33? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's the principle of a Christian. I put God first. And so, whenever I put my tithe 
the 10% of my income, I am making a profession of my faith that in my life, God is number one. All right? Now, how do we do that in practice? Okay? Here's a, an advice. No? Here's my encouragement to you. This is what you do. The moment you get your money, either as a salary, as an honorarium, you know, the moment you get it, okay, never think of other things except God. That's how a Christian does. You think of God, let's say, let's say I'm earning 15,000 a month. Okay, the moment the 15,000 is in my, in my hand, okay, of course, a Christian thanks God. Lord, thank you so much for this. Lord, I know this is not enough, okay? The first thing we do, because tithing is putting God first, prioritizing God, you remove the 10%, what's 10% of 15,000? You remove the 1,500, all right? Now, from what's left, so 15,000 minus 1,500, okay, from there, go to the bills, bro. go to savings, ayala, pang movies, pang day, okay? Date number one, date number two. Receive person, please. You know, Christians are faithful. Why are you laughing? Why are you reacting? When I say date number one, date, adding a place, and that line up with a date, same person. Okay? We are not two timers here. That's how we do it. Okay? But have you experienced that? And you know, a lot of Christians are doing that. But sometimes Satan is tempting us, no? Because we are not good in our finances. Wak pa niya ang Sunday, Friday pa lang, ang nabili sa quarter is 500 na lang, no? So you are now tempted to look at that one five, set aside, no? And so, ato na po ka, ha? No, you know, Lord, you understand my sister, can I borrow this? Uh, so Sunday, ang one five supposedly for the Lord, ay mo na lang 200. You know, Lord, 200 ako. Lord, ang aking tupad, Lord, ha? So we compare to remove that guilt, right? I give you 500, that's enough. But you missed the point. You are robbing God. Because that one five, the Bible says, is holy. Amen? It is holy. When you give your time, you are trusting God that, Lord, you will meet our needs. So, not particularly like this. When you set aside your time, okay, I want you to come up with, you know, a pouch or a bag na na time lock system na di na siya mabrik on Sunday. In other words, it's not, okay? You can do anything, you know? It only opens Sunday exactly 5 o'clock, right? Otherwise, we're always tempted to, you know, rob God, okay? But I tell you, those of you who are tithing God, I tell you, you will find that your blessings will always, you know, meet the next payday. Just try God, okay? The secret to success in life is to put God first and everything second only. I am getting first. I'm going to buy those jeans, I'm going to buy those bags, and then after the list, Okay, what's left that I can give to God? It means God is only last in your life. Now, if, if you put God first in your life, in your priorities, I tell you, your needs will be the first of God's priorities. Amen? Because that's what Jesus said. You will reap what you sow. If you sow prioritizing God, what you will reap is this. You will reap that God will also prioritize you in his plans. Amen? Number two, tithing provides for the needs of God's house. Okay, that's the second purpose of tithing. It provides for the needs. Look at verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be what? There might be food in my house. That's what God is saying. Right? Bring. Why? In the Old Testament, what, what is the house of God in the Old Testament? It's the temple, right? It's where, you know, the priests would offer sacrifices. It's where people would worship. Now, the temple, aside from the worship, the training, you know, the instructions of the Word of God, the temple is also a place of refuge. 
God wants his house to be a house of refuge so that when people go, people will always be fed. My dear friends, that's the same way. It works the same way with our lives. No? Now, last year, with the tithes that we have offered to the Lord, with the offerings we made, we were able to provide houses of those calamity victims in Kinatarkan Island, in the northern tip of Cebu. We were able to build houses for them with the help of OM and Conscience International. With the tithes that we offer, we are able to reach out people and bring them to our breakthrough retreats for free. With our tithes and offerings, we were able to baptize people last year, young people. With the tithes and offerings, we were able to gather more than 500 kids. These are not church kids, these are kids from poor areas in the city. See, that's what God is talking about. That's what he meant when he says, I want you to bring the tithes in the storehouse so that there may be food. Literally, these kids receive the food because there are people who give their tithes to God. Because of our tithes and offerings, we were able to gather mothers, you know, start Bible study for them, parents, okay? And we can continue our ministry of Sunday school and Bible studies. And, of course, bring our friends to our big events. Okay? Friends, we are dreaming big. Because God is big. And never think that our work is done. Never think that, you know, you know, work of God is done. No. Look around you. Look around you this week. Look at the people in the streets. So many people. So many people walking around, worshiping a God that they don't know. Blind them. And our goal in life is this. Not to convert them. It's simply to share Jesus to them so that they too may experience the abundant life of Jesus. Okay? That's our business. That's our goal. We want people to experience Jesus in a personal way. Because I know while well, people enjoy the Sinulo, but so many of them, they don't understand what they're doing. All they do is the fun side, you know, drinking, partying. Do you think those things please God? No. They need to know the truth. How God is pleased. Okay? And how, how can we bring the gospel to them if there is no food in the house of God? Okay? Church planting. Missions. There are still, don't you know that there are still, okay, almost 50%, okay, of people's groups, not nations, of people's groups, ethnic groups are still unreached. In other words, they don't have Bibles, they don't know Jesus, they don't know the Holy Spirit, they don't know God. How can they know God if Christians are stingy, right? Number three, tithing promotes my faith. Tithing promotes my faith, right? So when you tithe, you are actually showing yourself that you believe and you trust God to sustain you. Look at verse 10 again. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. When the Bible says, when God says, test me about tithing, he's talking about our faith. He's talking about us. He's talking about you. He's telling you, are you, are you happy? Are you going to trust me to provide your needs? Prioritize me. Because the reason why a lot of Christians don't tithe, because we are afraid. We are afraid that we might not buy the things that we like. We are afraid that we might not be able to sustain our family. But what is that? Those fears are fears caused by what? Doubting God. You doubt God. I doubt God to sustain my needs. But God is a faithful God. That's what we have learned last week, remember? God is true to his words. When God says, I will bless you, I he will bless you. Friends, it reminds me of one person okay, in the church, and you know, the pastor was talking about, about tithing, and this man, you know, goes to the church, Pastor, I'm not going to tithe. No, I'm not going to give, what do you call 20? Twine. 
Okay, what my what my type is only ten. No? I don't know. But this person says, no, Master, I'm not going to type. I'm going to give everything to God. Oh, the shop of Pastor, no? So, yeah, Pastor, I'll go to the altar during the offering. So, you know the job. Pastor, this is what I do. I give, I throw my all my income to the Lord. Pastor. So, it's a yeah, no? Balik mga na, no? Ako nita na. Okay? Well, that sounds ridiculous, but you know what? That's how it works. Give to God everything, and God will give back to you. The, 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 the only difference is this. When God gives it back to you, it will be more than what you gave. Amen? There was one person who was tested by God. Remember the nature of the word? Okay? I think it's in Mark chapter 10. Okay? This rich young ruler wanted to, you know, the question is this, how can I enter heaven? How can I gain eternal life? And Jesus said to this rich young ruler, you know, do the commandments. Okay? You know, do the commandments. You know, obey God, love me, you know, love your neighbors. And this young person says, well, I've done that since, since my youth. Okay? You really want to go to heaven? And then Jesus said to this young ruler, okay, here's what you do. Sell everything and then come to me. Go back, follow me, and you will experience abundant life. And you know, the Bible tells us that this man was sad. You know why? He was not willing to give up. Tithing, my friends, is about faith. It's not about putting money to the church fund. It's not about filling up the church budget. No! Tithing is faith. When I give my 10% to God, I am trusting, I am, you know, I am realizing my faith. I am increasing my faith that, Lord, I don't know if my money would still reach the next payday. But when I give this time to you, Lord, I'm allowing you, oh God, to do miracles in my life. Do you want God to do miracles in your life? You see, miracles don't happen if you already have it. Right? Miracles happen when we are in desperate needs. Alright? When we give our offerings to God, we are showing to God that, Lord, you are really first in my life and you will meet all my needs. So, tithing proves that I trust God to meet my daily needs. When my heart is right with God, my giving is also right. <laughs> So for those of us who are struggling with our giving to God, you know, it, some people will say, Pastor, you know, I have more kids. You don't understand. Pastor, the economy, you know, I'm only earning this. No, no, it's, it's really not about the economy of the Philippines. It's not about your finances. The reason why you struggle is your heart. Because Jesus Christ said, for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. When it comes to God, some suddenly you become problematic. But then when it comes to, you know, going to Boracay, yay, it's almost summer. Then suddenly, you know, you can raise money. So the question there is really not economy. You know, it's really the condition of our hearts. So friends tonight, let us check the condition of our hearts. All right? Are we struggling with tithing? Now, one time, there was this church, okay? Are you saying, okay, for, for another story? Okay, this church was haunted by ghosts. Okay, but again, no, ironic church and it goes. So, so, a pastor, didn't na maka rebukes a ghost, so he went to another church and asked for another pastor. And so, the, the, the pastor of another church went to this church and then observed, no, a ghost, grabby kayo, a disturbs of worship, Oh, yeah, they, they said, oh, you know, exorcism process. Well, good. They tried it. And then this pastor realized, maybe not be like gross. Okay, suddenly, that pastor took a, an offering back. He raised the knee And suddenly, the ghost disappeared. Talawa na ito sa offer. Okay? Okay, mao dito ang mga ghost, ang mga memoro sa una. No? Hindi na yung offering. So, how do you bring up another one? And it's like, 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 it's like,
Now, please don't be like those dolls, all right? Now, offering Bhagavad Gita to God, okay? Please be open. Change your heart, you know? When it comes to God, you know, Lord, you are first in my life. I'm not going to be stingy. Okay, you know why we should not be stingy? Here's the fourth thing. Here's the best thing. Because tithing promises what? Blessings to those who obey. That's the best part of tithing. When you give to the Lord, the Bible promises God will give back to you a hundredfold. Okay? Look at verse 10. Test me in this. This is what the Lord says. Says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room enough for it to store. You know, when was the last time the Bible mentions floodgates of heaven? There are only two instances in the Bible that know the word floodgate or the phrase floodgates of heaven. One is in Genesis during the flood. Okay? And when the Bible says, you know, floodgates of heaven was opened and then suddenly, you know, the burst of water and it flooded the whole earth. Now you see how the word is being used. So when God says, I will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing on you, imagine the catastrophe of Noah. Make it positive. All right? That's what God is talking about. He's going to bless your life that you will be amazed. You'll be amazed that, wow, we survived 2014. Amen? We survived. I survived a salary of 10,000. Wow. Right? That's what God is saying. God will prosper me when I fight. That's a promise. He says, test me. If I will not open the floodgates of heaven. And then he went on in verse 11. Look at verse 11. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. And the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe. Okay, here's another way God blesses us. Sometimes, God's blessing is not direct but indirect. Okay, for example, you may not reach or you may not receive a 100,000 bonus last year. Pastor, what is the blessing na daw? Pastor, what may 100,000 hapos lang it? Okay, question. Na hospital ka last year, wala. Ni taas mo blood pressure last year, wala. Kani mo sugar, ni taas, wala, wala. Okay, accident ka last year, wala. Nabangga yung car last year, wala. Okay. Can you please compute kung nabangga yung car, kung nag-maintenance ka, 1,000 per day, kumot ka yung blood pressure taas, taas yung sugar. O yan, kung na-hospital ka, usually kung hospital ka, the days, you know, in just two days, hospitalization, you would already, it will already cost you siguro 20,000. Itota ko na natin na, kung pila na siya, if those things happen to you, Probably it's around 100 or 500,000. See? That's how God blessed me. I was not hospitalized last year. No? I did not spend so much money on asthma. You see? Sometimes God's blessings are not directly. I will prevent pests. I will, you know, I will make sure that in your business, those employees, di ko na ko Imagine, imagine how many, you know, how much money will you, you know, will it cost you if you have a bad employee? Those are the other ways God bless us. Amen? Not only by prospering us, but the other way is this. He will pre pre prevent and protect us from things that would cost what? So much money. Amen? So appreciate God. I want you to look back. 2014. Okay? You may not receive one million, you know, from Metro Gaisano, what kind of the Oxford Raffle, but surely what kind of disgrace, what the Gubay Musakinan, and all other things. Amen? That is how God fulfills His promise because God will protect me if I tithe. Kung sa may assurance ako na pastor, your assurance is the Bible. As long as the Bible of God, the Word of God is true, God will fulfill it in your life. Again, the Bible says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, 
What's the promise? Then your barns will be filled to overflowing. Your vats will bring over with new wine. You want your life to be overflowing. You want your life to be overflowing? Then give God your tithes and offering. Don't be stingy this year. The Bible says give and it will be what? Give it back to you. Good measure. Press down, shake it together. Running over will be done into your lungs. That's a promise. And I'm sure a lot of us, okay, can I see the hands of those who can prove that what God said in His Word is true? How many of us here type and then experience, you know, the promises of God? Amen. Praise God. So many of us. Just test God. Just test God. Peter Marshall says, Give according to your income, lest God make your income according to your giving. Now that's, that's terrible. Okay, give according to your income, otherwise God will make your income according to your giving. So if you're giving, if you're giving God cheap blessings, maybe God is going to give you, you know, cheap income later on. But the Bible says, give generously to God and do so without what? A grudging heart. And what's the result? Then because of this, the Lord your God, take note, will bless you in all your work. Notice the promise of God, very specific. God will bless you in all your work. In everything you put your hand into. Wow. Isn't that so amazing? Deuteronomy 15.10. If I'm going to honor God with my wealth, He will bless my work. He will bless your business. He will give you good health. Amen? Now let me close with this story. Right? About this man. In 1804, William, a boy, a teenager by the name of William, left England, went to New York to find a fortune. Okay? He tried so hard. Okay, he entered, he, he joined a Presbyterian church in New York, and there faithfully worshiped God. God blessed him with the work. I am still do one dollar and fifty cents. And he recalled a canal, uh, canal ship uh, captain said to this boy, why are you here? And he, of course, this boy William told this man, you know what? We are very poor in England, and I'm here in America to find a living. And this man happens to be a Christian, you know. Bless William. You know, William, I pray that God will bless you with skills. I pray that when you honor God with your life, God will make you, you know, the best soap maker in America. If not in America, in the world. Okay? And then this man told, told William, William, this is what you do. Do everything with all your heart. Work at it. You know, as if you're working to the Lord. Honor God with your wealth. Even if you're only earning little, give to God your 10%. Okay? And you know, what this man said to William, you know, became the, you know, the, the attitude of William. So, even if he received $1.50, he gave, what is that? 10% of that? 15 cents. Okay? So, the girl has of $50, he gave 5 Daughters to the Lord until he became partner of the company, until he owns the company. And this William, of course, is no other than William Colgate, the owner of Colgate Palmolive, right? Richest man, one of the richest men who ever lived, but one of the richest men who gave richly to the Lord. Don't you know that he has, you know, started so many churches, so many mission works? You know, uh, kind of mga orphanages. And not only did he tested God with one, first one ten, second one twenty percent. He even reached towards one hundred percent. Some point in his life, he said, "You know, I have already everything. Lord, money is always coming." You know, before he died, he reached the point of giving all his income to God. And you know, Colgate Palmolive is still blessed by God. Still the best 
foot base in the Philippines. <laughs> Shout out, Mark Pogita. Mauna siya, Mason, na mapalit ka sa una. Ayo, papilit ako Pogit, ka ng close up. <laughs> Friends, you can be the next William Pogit. Honor God in your life, and God will honor you by providing this blessing. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much that when we talk about blessing, there is a responsibility on our side. Yes, you are true to your promises. But Father, what we want tonight, Lord, is please transform our hearts first. It's so hard for us to give you our tithes and offerings if our hearts are grudging. If our hearts are stingy. Lord, it's not the amount. It's not the amount that, that touches your heart. It is our hearts. Even if we give you 10%, Lord, but if we are not joyful in giving it, we would still not honor you. So our prayer, Lord, tonight is that first and foremost, that you be enthroned as king, as master. Change the way we look at you, Lord. Before, we only treat you as part of religion. But that's not, Lord, that's not the case. You are not just religion. You are our God. You are our maker, our sustainer. You save us from our sins. You gave us your best, Lord. And yet, we are not willing to give our best to you. Father, tonight, can you please change our hearts? Forgive us, Lord. We want to repent from dishonoring you by giving you leftovers, by giving you only the leftover of, of our resources. Forgive us, Lord, if we've given ourselves best and yet we give you a second faith offering. Lord, this year 2015, would you please change that? Lord, we want to experience the blessings you promised in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. When you said, test me in this, and I will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing on you that you will have no room enough to store it. Lord, we want to be channels of your blessing this year. So I pray that you are going to bless our hearts. Because it is our hearts, Lord, that will determine our giving. Lord, may Jesus Christ be the treasure of our hearts. And right now, Father, maybe there are people here this evening. Maybe they're just being invited and they don't know how to react to this message, Lord. But Lord, my prayer is this, that their hearts will be indwelt by your Holy Spirit tonight. That they will not leave this place without experiencing your blessing over their lives. So, Father, bless them. Lord, maybe there are people here whose hearts are still empty of Jesus. Maybe what they have is just religion, but they don't have the reality of Christ in them. Whoever you are, I pray for you right now. Would you please welcome Jesus Christ tonight? Maybe you have not yet done this before. You have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Would you please do that tonight? Say the simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me. Forgive me that I have not given you my best. Forgive me that I have ignored you. You died on the cross to pay for my sins. What a wonderful deed you have done, Lord. Right now, Lord Jesus, would you please forgive me for my sins? Forgive me for my ignorance of you. Forgive me of my stubbornness. Forgive me if I don't treat you the way you should be treated as God. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Right now, would you please come dwell in my life. I welcome you, Lord. Do 
as you wish in my life. Help me to follow your will. I want to follow the path that you have already prepared for me. I want to receive your plan and purpose for my life. Lord Jesus, guide me each day that I will no longer reject you, that I will follow you till the last moment of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Haggai 1, 6 says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have so much and harvested little. You eat, but you never had enough. You drink, but you never had your fill. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so, does so to put them into the bag of repose. Brothers and sisters, let us now put forth our tithes, pledges, and our offerings to the Lord. trailer for the youth camp and I am here to tell you another story. I'm sorry, I know that Kuyama has told us quite a lot of stories a while ago, but last two years I joined for the first time youth camp and I had the most wonderful time in my life and I am challenging you guys for all the youth here to experience that change 
for in that camp I did not just create, have, had fun, had new friends, but I realized that Jesus Christ is not just a person with the white robe, with the staff, but he is a person who saves. So do not miss this wonderful chance, a life-changing event this coming summer, Youth Cup. Register now while it's early for the registration fee is only 1,000 pesos until February 21. So do not wait for longer. And since we, Guyama has already kind of encouraged and asked to give our tithes, how about let us give more? I am called. We have been praying for Lord, give this camp cheerful givers and be that answer to that prayer if you want to give we will be so grateful after all god loves a cheerful giver before i end i am afraid that the youth here are wasting half of their lives by missing the youth praise night and the youth fellowship so we are inviting you youth praise nights friday 7 p.m and fellowship sundays 2 p.m Hope to see you guys around and thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, thank you so much, O God, for just giving us your message, a reassuring message, O God, that you will not leave us, but you will forsake us. Help us, O God, to really give you in faith and in gratitude, O Lord, and to give you what is yours. Help us, Lord God, to give it up we serve. Heavenly Father, all of these times, not just an offering, are yours. Use it as you please. Guide us, oh Father God, and how we are going to use this. Lord, this is yours. Thank you, oh Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.